Good morning, guys. We're just going to wait for a couple more people to get here. We're going to get started closer to 8.30. Um, but anyhow, <clears throat> if you guys are tuned in, uh, you'll see that uh, I picked up a very small position size, only 25 shares of NIO uh, around here. <clears throat> I bought in at 24.41 just because I see a nice bottom here, bottoming out at 24.25. So I picked it up here around the consolidation, and I want to see it creep up, break this uh, resistance here, and take out this little high here. And I'm hoping to see a reversal throughout the day. <clears throat> NIO has taken a beating all day yesterday. I'm, I'm looking for a reversal today, uh, just because I believe this stock has long-term potential. And I do have a long-term hold on NIO in an alternate account. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to take a very small position uh, to just day trade. <clears throat> So what I'm doing now guys is I'm looking at um, the top movers for the day uh, in the pre-market. That's what we want to identify. We want to identify what traders are looking at, what traders want to buy, what traders want to sell. Basically uh, that's what we're doing here, right? We're looking to buy something that people are going to want to buy from us later at a higher price. <clears throat> and to do that what you need to look at is 
what is moving for the day, what your, your big market, pre-market gappers are, um, what has a lot of demand right now. Uh, and we see Mayos popping up. <clears throat> I'm just drawing in my daily support and resistances, which you will learn are very important because that will allow us to figure out where the bottom bounces are coming, uh, what we can expect, uh, where to buy, where to sell, different things like that. <clears throat> So Miles here is a stock uh, that just popped up on my radar here. Um, already 4 million shares bought and sold, and it's only 8.22 a.m. <clears throat> so it shows a lot of demand for the stock, but also it shows that the stock is also heavily traded, meaning uh, that we may have missed the move. All right, we see a 10,000 share seller here on the ask. Um, and so anytime that happens, you want to take a little bit of precaution because the more people sell, the more it will drive down the price, right? You want to buy something uh, where people are buying, uh, not so much selling. <clears throat> so we got miles here, not really any news. <clears throat> back guys we're looking at uh, YRC let's see if there's any news on this uh, just two hours ago US to loan military holler uh, 700 million for nearly a 30% stake so the US is buying 30% of this stock here uh, seems like fairly good news uh, I'm gonna put this into my level twos I'm gonna put this into my level twos here um, so we can continue to watch this <clears throat> you see a 12,000 share seller here at 225 I want to see if we can break 225 and break 446 um, <clears throat> it's a $4 stock so a little bit more expensive uh, normally we're trading things between the two and five dollar range so at four dollars we're usually in the upper ranges there Uh, so let's see how this reacts to the news, right? Because they opened down here uh, last night at a dollar eighty. It's now four dollars. Um, so anyone that was holding shares of this stock from yesterday uh, made a really, really good return on their money, right? One hundred and twenty-five percent. So they might just be selling off this morning, um, and we don't want to get caught holding the bag uh, if they are selling off. So I'm just gonna leave it here. On my level twos, if it breaks 425, and we get interested in it, um, looks like it might break. Oh no, back up and down. So it's it's getting it's getting caught here at 425. I'm gonna keep an eye on a 10,000 share seller at 400 and at, at 410. Uh, so we'll just keep an eye on this here. I'm gonna have Myos here, keeping an eye on that as well in my other level twos <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
TTOO. <clears throat> Another stock that is popping up. I'm not familiar with the stock at all. Um, so they just launched COVID diagnostic test. Okay. Uh, so, so it's a COVID-19 catalyst. Um, it could be strong considering the, the climate that we're in now with the pandemic. So what we're doing now is we're just drawing in our daily supports and resistances, uh, trying to figure out where this is going to bounce, where a good buying position is. So this is what you want to do for every stock um, that you're considering to, to trade. So you just want to eyeball it doesn't have to be exact uh, so so why CW that is just flushing down so it's a good thing so that's why usually uh, we like to wait for a stock to show a strength uh, before we hop in and we buy and so it used to be 420 425 it's now down to 405 410 <coughs> just got a message that NIO is just fading off definitely is fading um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sell my position here broke this bottom line here I was hoping that it would hold I uh, did not hold so I'm just gonna let my position go there's big bias here at $24 10,000 shares but it looks like they're going to break so I'm just gonna sell here uh, so lost a little bit of money on the day uh, so far ten dollars took a gamble in nio just because i believe it is a good stock with um but its day is maybe not today it might come next week <clears throat> so we're looking at uh let's see here ul LGN. Another therapeutics. Let's see what we have here in the news. I'm not familiar with this stock either. My first time seeing it popping up here. Nothing really going on. Uh, on the sidebar there of news. Okay, so this daily charts um, shows a big gap. Very interesting up to here of twenty-six dollars. Take a look on the one minute here. So QLGN. Let's pop that into the level two, see what it looks like. Two million shares bought and sold so far on this stock. Um, right now sitting at 614. It just passed um, its previous pre-market highs. What we're looking for is a continual show of strength. Um, and so I want to see this break. Uh, 625 before I even hop in so I'm going to set my order here at 630 so if it does break 625 I'm ready to hop in and buy some shares um, to ride it up it looks like it has room up to eight dollars on the daily um, yeah it doesn't seem to me anything stopping it there not a lot of sellers let's see if volume comes in
But once again, guys, right? So because it it popped up uh, 50% since yesterday, people that own the shares <laughs> last night, right? Um, they they had it at, at pretty much at four dollars. So when they wake up this morning, they see that six. There might just be a sell off here. Um, that's why we're we're coming into some resistance here as we're trying to pop over the six fifteen and the previous pre market highs of six twenty four. So it just dropped from a high of six twenty four all the way down to just below six dollars. So it needs to hold six dollars for this to show. Uh, some sort of strength and its last previous level was here where it consolidated around uh, 580, 577. Let's just keep an eye. Let's see what it does here. We see some buyers popping in, buying it around the $6 mark. open another screen I want to keep my OS on here so my OS we can see it is fading off from its pre-market highs right so we had a pre-market high out here at 365 then a lower high then a lower high now it's just fading um, and really on miles there's no real news here so I don't understand why it popped up generally what I like to do is I, I want to see a news catalyst I want some reason for other traders to be interested I want some reason for other traders to get excited about this stock and if um, there is um, and if there is then um, it can validate why we are buying and why we are selling So pretty much what we're doing now is we're waiting uh, for a stock to show us some good strength, something to buy, something to get interested. Um, so I'm just replying to an email here just because YouTube isn't ready yet. And so if there's real, if there's no real catalyst for us to buy and sell. Um, Traders are just not going to be interested, and if that's the case, there's not going to be demand there, right? Because what we're doing essentially is we are buying something that someone else is going to want to buy from us at a higher price, um, and that's basically how how trading works, right? Um, so we want to buy something that we feel that will have a, a high demand, but it has to show us that the, the demand is there, right? One of the ways we see demand is volume being traded. Um, so we see these green bars here. Green means uh, more buying volume. Red means more selling volume. Uh, and that's that's pretty much what we need to see to be comfortable to buy a stock. So a lot of times we are we are just kind of waiting and trying to scope out a mover. Uh, so the hardest part about being a trader actually is is patience. Uh, a lot of times uh, we're just so bored that we want to make a play um, on on anything, and that's going to result in us losing money. And that's not what we want to do because generally, if you are a day trader, uh, you you should have some sort of financial goal, right? Uh, with anything in life, you should have some sort of goal. Um, and you want to work towards that goal uh, and, and you want to keep that top of mind so my personal goal for day trading is to make five hundred dollars Canadian every single day right on average right so maybe some days I'll make 50 bucks some days I'll make a thousand dollars which means over the, the course of the two days I'm averaging about five hundred dollars Canadian which is doable uh, from the strategy here and I'm only playing with five thousand dollars USD right 
Um, so essentially making around 8% a day on, on my money on average, just making smart decisions. Uh, and so there's no need to get greedy because I know that is very doable. Um, and it doesn't sound like it's amazing, right? $500 a day um, to, to, to do this. But if you add it up, right, it's, it's slow and steady. That, that's what you need to, to look at. The same thing in our careers, in our jobs. We're, we're going to get a job at an entry-level position. We're going to need to work there for a year, maybe 18 months, maybe two years, and we get promoted, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So it's slow and steady. Same thing with day trading. Um, it's also slow and steady, right? So if you're making $500 a day, every single day day trading just in the morning, that is a $125,000 income just from day trading, right? Um, and you're going to get there a lot faster by minimizing your losses. And so keeping that in mind, um, what you want to do is you want to start making smarter decisions, develop a game plan, and trade very, very small shares until like, if you're learning, right? The same thing as if you're lifting weights. You want to lift lighter weights until you can get stronger than you lift heavier weights, right? You don't want to go on the bench press rack throw on 400 pounds and, and you're going to kill yourself on the first lift, right? Because you're going to drop that heavy, heavy ass weight on yourself. The same thing with day trading. You start small, small share size. Um, and that way you want to show yourself that, hey, I can make green trades. That green trades means you're, you're making money, right? Rather than red trades. Um, and gradually, uh, you prove to, to yourself, yes, um, I'm consistently making money. So what I can do now is increase my share size and make more money per transaction right um, and, and that's basically what you want to do until you get to an area where you're comfortable and, and you can trade within a, a limit and hit your financial goals um, and, and with with everything in life uh, what you want to do is you want to assess your projects is this worth for me to do for myself um, how I assess my project on what to take on what to do is if every week so every week you have about 40 to 50 working hours, right? In general. Um, some jobs require you to work like 70, 80 hours. Some jobs are like regular kind of office jobs are like maybe 40, 50 hours a week. Um, and so if you split your week up into, let's say, a 50 hour, 50 hour segments, right? Each week you have 50 hours. Um, and so if I'm going to do something for let's say 10 hours every single week for an entire year, that thing that I'm doing, that project, has to generate at least $100,000 for me, right? So that means um, you're pretty much saying, okay, I'm not going to take on a project unless this project um, over the course of 10 hours every single week for the entire year is going to generate six figures for me. And if it's under that, you say no. If it's above that, you say yes, right? And it really depends on what your financial goals are and, and what you want to do, and you set that level. And there's a very easy way to say yes or no to different projects and different opportunities um, because now you have a very, very clear metric of, of to assess, is it worth it, right? And so for me, day trading, two hours a day, right? 8.30 to 10.30 every single day, Monday to Friday, that's 10 hours. And if I average $500 every single day, which I have been doing consistently, that's going to generate $125,000 of income for me in the entire year. And so I really like day trading because I trade until about 10.30 and the rest of the day I get to work on my other products, right? The other 10 hours spent here, the other 10 hours spent there, spent there. And essentially, that's how you're going to gradually grow your income and become financially free. Um, just having a clear understanding of where you want to go long term. Um, and and uh, and all of that. So something to think about, guys. Day trading isn't for everyone, um, but I like it. It's fun. It's almost like a video game uh, where where you get paid to play, um, get paid to make smart decisions, and and it's it's essentially uh, whether you're an extrovert or an introvert, uh, it's it's doable, right? Um, if you're an introvert, you're pretty much a salesperson that never has to talk to people because you're just picking something that you think there's demand for, you buy it, and then you sell it to someone else, there's no talking, all you do is a click a button. If you're an extrovert, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, so it kind of works out for everyone, um, and, and I really like it, just because I'm, I'm, I'm a gamer, as much as my wife Sherry hates that. I love playing computer games, and this is just fun. I want to point out something here. QLGN showing a bit of strength here, right? So we see it 
it tapped this line here, it tapped this line here again and fell. But it fell to this line here. This yellow line here is the VWAP. And so this is pretty much like the volume weighted price of, of the stock. So people buying, uh, people selling, the volume and the price is, is entwined, right, in this indicator. And it held this VWAP line. So I always use this VWAP as a support or resistance. And so I like to see it bounce off. Um, so maybe we found a bottom here. And so what I want to see now I want, is I want to see this push up um, and I want to see this hold. Uh, basically what I'm looking at here is a five minute setup. And so the last five minute bar here is 595. So I want to see this past 595, then I'm going to buy in at $6 because if it passes the last five minute bar, it's a good show of strength, bounce off you up. I like that. The one thing I'm hesitant on is we're, we're at the $6 mark. We see a huge rejection here. Um, so I'm a little bit uncomfortable with that. Uh, so this huge uh, red candle rejection is pretty much showing us that the price tried to drive all the way up here and it could not hold, right? So once it got to this point, um, people holding the stock were like, I'm going to sell it because this stock is way overpriced right now. And they sold it, and which is why we get this huge rejection here and it closed down here. And we see here, uh, we have this topping candle, candle here. We see a flush down here. And now uh, this green candle, even though it was green originally, it's it's not really holding, right? It's it's kind of wavering there back and forth. Um, yeah, and so we're gonna wait here. I want to see if we can hold the VWAP. It might consolidate and bounce. So let's see what it does here. Our top movers I haven't really been doing anything. Um, we see TTOO consolidating along this line here that we drew in, right? So it's it was a pre-market high. It broke that. So when we're looking to trade stocks, we're pretty much trading based on what other traders are going to do, what they think. Uh, and usually, traders follow a certain set, set of, of rules, a certain set of rules. And so uh, a simple rule to follow is previous resistance becomes new support, right? So what happens is if there's a line like a ceiling, you break that ceiling. Next time when you're coming down, you're like, let's say you're on the first floor you break the first floor ceiling now you're on the second floor and for you to come back to the first floor you need to break the floor that you're on right because now you're on the second floor you're going to break that floor to come back to the first floor so it's harder to break a ceiling or it's hard to break a floor right depending on where you are and ttoo right now we see is it just broke this ceiling right this resistance and now it's up here um and now uh it's finding support right on the floor because it's now in the, the second level this is the first floor and to, to get back to the first floor, it has to break this line here. And so we drew this line in here previously, and this is a great show of how, a great demonstration of how traders respect these rules. And so as a day trader yourself, you need to understand what rules are other traders following, right? How can I take advantage of their mindset? What are they gonna be doing at this point in time? What are they be doing here and here and here? And the better we understand that, the better day traders we are, right? Because essentially, this is a computer game where we are trying to anticipate what the mass crowd is doing. And if we anticipate that better, we become more successful as a day trader. Um, and day trading, there's so many different levels, right? Most of the time people are, are trading um, and they're getting into the market. They're, they're amateurs, they're, they're novices, um, and they're not looking for the same things we're looking. They're not thinking the same way we are thinking. And that's where our advantage comes in. YRCW, 
another stock we, we took a look at this morning. Once again, uh, I just want to show you here the rejection off of this ceiling, right? So this is the resistance. It touched once, it fell back down to the VWAP. It touched twice, three times, it fell back down. Anytime it touches a ceiling a lot, that, that means it's a very, very hard ceiling. It's like concrete. You can't break through it. Um, and so if that happens multiple times, it just shows the strength of that ceiling. And now traders are like, whoa, this ceiling is super strong. It's going to be very hard to break. So people are going to try and sell. And that's what we see here. This huge candle of rejection is tailing wick shows a reversal, right? It's trying to break through. It can't break. And so the minute it touches here, everyone is like, sell which is why we have this huge candle falling down. And so we talked about this in the course, how to read candlesticks. And that way you can kind of predict where the price of the stock is going. We see this wick of rejection. We see it falling off. And we saw that, um, where do we see that? We saw that here on TTOO as well, right? So I'm going to zoom in here for you guys. This here was a ceiling, a resistance that we drew in off a of daily support. It came close to it, rejected, right? This tailing wick um, of green. And then it tried to go again, rejected. And so every time you see this huge rejection, you know it's going to fall off, right? And which is why we see this red flush here. Um, and now uh, we want to see a show of strength along this line here. So we're curling up. I want to see this break $6. If it can break $6, I'm going to hop in um, this here. I want to really see it break. 624 so I'm gonna buy in if it breaks six dollars I'm gonna set a stop loss at uh, at six right if it breaks six and falls back down I'm gonna get out because I know right here we saw a big rejection but I'm gonna take a small chance here in case we do break six dollars the rejection I'm talking about is here in the five minute setup right usually I'm looking at the one minute setup uh, but we see a big, big rejection here right off 625. So, so we need to see it shows strength, blast through $6, blast through 625, and continue to push up. I don't see any real news on here. So I have QWGN on my level twos. Level twos is something I talk about in the course, it's very important. You see uh, the bids, you see the ask. You see how many shares being bought and sold on each side so you can almost determine the demand for it this here is what's called the tape green means people are buying at the ask which shows very very good demand red means people are selling at the bid which shows uh, a, a lack of demand right people are just trying to sell and get out So these are our top movers of the day, which is why I keep on flipping back and forth to them. Uh, and we're going to just kind of look at these guys until we find better opportunities in the market. I like this here, right? So it's popping up um, and it fell back down to this blue EMA line. This is just a, another level. Uh, another indicator that I put in on my charts that traders tend to respect. Let me look at NIO for a little bit. This was my baby last week. Uh, so we bought into NIO on, on Tuesday of last week at like $21. It went to a high of $36 by the end of the week. And now it's falling back down. Um, but NIO is a long-term hold that I have in, in another account. By long-term, I mean a few weeks. I expect it to hit $40, $50 over the next few weeks there we have a lot of catalysts coming in so I'm just going to keep my my eye on that during the day <clears throat> so I want to show you guys something here on myos m y o s this line here seems to be a very, very strong floor, right? Or a very strong support. Every time it touches here, we see a rejection, but a rejection to the buy side, right? So people are like, oh, it's too low here, I'm going to buy, and it shoots up. Touches here, it's too low here, I'm going to buy, and it shoots back up. So if we're looking for a bottom bounce, which is another concept that I teach in the course, um, this level here would add a $1.72 might be a very very good buy-in and i'm going to shrink the chart a bit so you can look over here guess what we have here we have a ceiling right previous 
resistance becomes new support. Um, and that's what we see. This line here, previous ceiling, new support, new support. Right? So traders follow um, strict set of rules. And that's why the market moves the way it does. And, and, and so that's really interesting to see as you start trading more and more and more. You're going to be noticing these patterns. Um, and that's going to make you a better trader as we go on. And, and all these things uh, I've learned over the years that I've been trading. And I teach that to you guys in the course. And so you guys are going to be having a, a really good head start on your trading on your trading career there. And if you guys watch me stream every single morning, I kind of explain what I'm doing, what I'm looking at, uh, what I see. And so you guys are going to gradually understand and hear that yourselves, right? And so I'm reiterating kind of the rules that we follow as traders, what I think other people are thinking, how I'm going to react to it, what I expect to see, and different things like that. A lot, a lot of times trading has to do with risk management as well. And so that's a very important factor um, in, in trading. Uh, yeah. So Alan, um, one of my sub subscribers here, he just he, he did a little bit of research on QLGN. So thank you for that, Alan. So he said that uh, this stock here, QLGN, announced it has submitted a notification to the FDA to commence the distribution of its fast pack coronavirus antibody test. Um, so it is a COVID-19 catalyst, which can be strong right and right now. There's a lot of testing going on for COVID-19. And so we see QLGN finding a support along here, which is the VWAP. It bounced off the VWAP here, tried to break it again. Let's see what happens here. If it can hold this support here uh, one more time. I might take a small starter, right? Because the more times it touches the support and bounces back, the more strength that support shows. So I might try and buy it around uh, 570, 571. Try to ride it up to this level here, which is 590, right? 20 cents a share. If I'm in for 100 shares, that's a $20 profit. And you just have to do that. 10 times a day, then you just made $200 USD, right? And, and it's, it's very, um, depending on, on the type of day we are having, stocks may bounce around a lot, so you may have many of these opportunities. So you don't need to look for uh, a grand slam home run, right? You don't need to buy a stock at a dollar and have it shoot up to $10 to make a lot of money. Sometimes you're just making 10, 20 cents per share, and that adds up, it accumulates throughout the morning, and then you're gonna be hitting your daily goal. You see a lot of green coming in. That's what I like to see. But once again, right here, guys, 595 is our line in the sand. We touched it here, we touched it here, we touched it here. So on QLGN, if I was to take a starter, starter is a, a small position size just to get your foot in, in, in the door, right? It's kind of like uh, when you go swimming, you want to test the water to see if it's cold or if it's hot. So you just dip your toe in. And if it's cold, you get out and only your, your toe is sacrificed. Uh, so I might take a starter down here at, uh, at, at where the level is now and have my stop loss just below the VWAP. So if it breaks this level of support, I'm going to get out. If it holds, I'm going to stay in. Um, it looks like it, it might be popping up. It's almost 9 o'clock in the morning. So there are times where, where traders start getting more active. Um, and those times are usually at the half an hour intervals, right? So 8.30, 9, 9.30 is when the market opens. Um, and usually the market goes crazy, either up or down. You never know. Um, and then 12, obviously, when people get off for lunch, like the regular 9 to 5ers, um, they might make a trade in the morning before they go to work, and then they look at their stocks um, at lunchtime, which is at 12 o'clock. And so sometimes at lunch you see a huge sell-off because people are taking their profits. Mayo's finding a good level of support here, so it's kind of like an 
ascending support. I'm going to draw it in for you guys. So we have this ascending line here of support. Um, it's breaking the VWAP. So I'm going to take a starter in Myos. I'm going to buy in at 245. If it breaks 244, I'm just going to wait and see. It's having trouble breaking 240. Oh my goodness, this shot up. All right, so on the radar, here we go. QLGN. I want to see this break 615. If it does, I'm in. Um, it looked like it was about to break, so I hopped in there. I got in for 615. Uh, QLGN is starting to move, so it broke this previous support here. Um, resistance, we need to see it break 625. If it breaks 625, I'm going to hop in again um, at 630 with another 250 shares. Um, so be careful, guys. We might see just another huge rejection here, um, but it's starting to move. We missed it because we we're looking at other things, which happens. Um, so let's see here. So I'm in at 615, 250 shares. I wanted to buy in here. I was talking about taking a starter, um, and then we flipped off to other shares, uh, other other stocks, and so we missed that. If it breaks 625, I'm going to hop in. Um, so it hit 622, 623. Right now it's 622. So what I'm, I'm waiting for is a show of strength. It needs to break that previous uh, resistance, which is the ceiling. I'm going to have my hand on the buy button. And then I'm also going to set a stop loss if it breaks um, this line here of six. If it breaks $6, I'm going to sell. If it holds $6, I'm going to stay in. So this is known as a double top, right? Or maybe even three times. So it touched this level 620-ish, 620-ish, and it got rejected. So we want to see it test this, this ceiling, and we want, we want to see it break through. Myos continuing to show strength. It broke the VWAP here. Um, and so I really like that. I really like the fact that it, it can break the VWAP. I want to see it break this level uh, here, which is 648. And if it does, I'm going to be more interested in it. So I'm going to take Myos. I'm going to put it over here. So we can take a look at that. And then we're going to look at QL over here. So a lot of times we're looking at multiple stocks, trying to pick which one is, is going to be the winner. So on Myos, I want to see it break this line here, uh, which is pretty much like 250. So if it can break $2.50, I'm going to be interested. I'm going to get in. And so right now I'm just going to wait right here. Broke that line in the sand, 225. So I got in there at 625 because I was looking for that to break, right? And it broke that. It showed real good strength. So I bought in another 250 shares. So I'm in right now. It's 620. Um, I'm going to set my stop loss at 615. I'm willing to lose five cents a share. I want to see what it does here. 630, 2,000 share seller. I want to see it break this and pop up. Let's go. A lot of green on the tape. That means people are buying. That's what I like to see. Um, QL, it pops up, trails back down. Uh, let, and then let's see it consolidate here. I want to see it hold this level, which is 615. And that's where I have my stop at right now. 
so it broke this previous level of resistance which is good that's what we, what we want to see that's a good sign of support I mean good sign of strength So it's consolidating around here right now. I uh, fell back down to 615. I want to see it hold this this position here. a bunch of red so people are selling they're getting scared at this level I'm gonna hold for a little bit I want to see it hold the six dollar mark uh, if it doesn't I'm going to sell some positions um, and reduce my share size there so it just flushed um, so this flush is, is what you're scared of every time you see a rejection you might see a flush down but um, it looks like it's holding the view up I'm gonna take a starter here So I bought here another 250 shares at 590 just because all along here it's been holding the VWAP and then we have this secondary support line here which we drew in so I think this is going to be a good a good strong support there so I bought in another 250 shares my cost basis is now 610 I want to see this pop up and just push uh, but once again if it does break I'm going to need to sell right because that's what you want to do you don't want to fall in love with your stocks if so I bought based on a hypothesis I believe something was going to happen if that something doesn't happen that means I'm wrong and I need to get out of the trade right and the sooner you realize that the easier it is to get out of the trade just right so you want to minimize your losses and you want to maximize your gains um, and on, on QL what I'm doing is I'm sacrificing right I'm willing to lose about 20 cents a share because the next level up here is eight dollars and sixty cents right so if I'm going from six dollars to eight fifty that's two dollars and fifty cents so I'm willing to risk twenty cents to make two dollars and fifty cents which is a ten to one risk uh, reward to risk ratio and if you do that multiple times all you have to do is win once out of ten times and you're break even right so if you win fifty percent of the time you're making money and so that has to do with kind of your risk management there um, and, and understanding uh, these, these different ratios. So we see a bit of weakness here. I'm not liking this. If I see a, if I see a break 580, I'm going to sell some positions. I'm going to sell some here. I want to see it hold the view up. But once again, I did minimize my position, right? So I had 750 shares. I sold 250 just in case it breaks the view up and flushes. I don't want to be holding uh, that many shares. It's fighting. It's holding. I want to see it pop up and recover its previous highs. Hopefully, it's not a red day today. It is Canada Day, but I want to see green. That's what we want to see as traders. take a look at other things here okay TTOO finding some support here that's what I like to see if it breaks the VWAP uh, I'm gonna be really interested in it the VWAP is this yellow line here so I'm gonna throw TTOO onto my my chart here just to take a look at it so I see a huge buyer at down here so I'm just gonna buy um, TTOO it looks like it's gonna pop oh. 
So in TTOO, I saw big buyers come in, so that's a good level of support here. So I bought in at 215. In anticipation of breaking this VWAP here at 216. This here, showing some strength, holding the VWAP. So I'm going to hold my 500 shares. I'll pop TTOO in here so we can take a better look at that. Put Myos in here. Why are fading? <clears throat> so we're in two stocks right now. We're in TTOO. I, I bought in prematurely for the break of VWAP here. It looks like it might break. I saw like 15,000 share buyers pop up on my level twos, um, but then there were also big sellers at 215. So some people are trying to stop it from breaking the VWAP. 20,000 share buyer at 211, awesome. Um, QL slowly pushing up, so it found support here along the VWAP. That's what I like to see. So the VWAP here is at 5.78. So that might be a very, very safe buy-in. So if it touches 5.80, that's a good place to buy in. And if it falls below the VWAP to like 5.70, then you sell. Pretty much you're risking 8 cents to make like 30 cents, right? Because you want to see it pop back up to 6.20. Um, actually, if you buy at like, yeah, 5.80 to 6.20, that's 40 cents. And you're risking 10 cents for that, right? So you have a 41, a 4 to 1 risk reward ratio. So we see QL slowly creeping up off the VWAP. So let's see what it does here. Thirty thousand people trying to buy TTOO at two dollars and eleven cents. Awesome, awesome. So, anytime you see that, that shows that it's going to be very hard for this to pass two dollars and eleven cents, um, because you need to sell and all these people are going to buy. So it's very hard to pass that level. And so that's why I hopped in there uh, at a little bit higher price, two fifteen because I knew 211 was a support and I saw that on my level twos um, but if it breaks 211 then I gotta sell because I was wrong about that support right now 32,000 people are trying to sell I mean trying to buy at uh, 211 very nice so QLGN uh, we bought along here along the VWAP that's what I was talking about we would have made some good money there so I'm back to break even on QL. So a lot of times you want to hold your position. Don't don't panic, um, but also limit your risk, right? If, if there's a risk. Um, so in here, my stop is, is uh, I want to see it hold $6. A lot of times whole numbers are a good support and resistance. So we're having some trouble breaking 6.10 on QLG, QLGN. QLGN, so hard to say.
Okay, so we have a 17,000 share seller on TTOO at 215. So we need to break uh, that. So there needs to be buyers to flood the market, buy up all those shares for us to pass $2.15. Uh, right now we're fighting that level there. 20,000 shares trying to be sold at 215. So more volume needs to come in. Uh, but also on TTOO, there's already been 18 million shares bought and sold this morning. Oh, we went from 20,000 to 12,000, 11,000, more and more people. 2,000, oh, we're just about to break. There, we just broke it. 216 now. on TTOO there we go 216 and we got 20,000 share buyers trying to buy at 215 let's see if we can break this VWAP here there we go we just hit 216 So in TTOO, we got a lot of a lot of sellers and a lot of buyers. It's very very heavily traded, right? Which is something I, I just spoke about. 18 million shares bought and sold already. Um, so it's going to be very hard for this stock to move because everyone's trying to sell when it pushes one penny, and then people trying to buy when it falls back one penny. Um, so I'm going to sit, I'm going to wait in TTOO. I have 250 shares at $2.15. But it is slowly creeping up. That's what I like to see. Um, so it hit a high here of 217, which is two cents above my purchase price. Uh, but in general, on these stocks here, you want to see it break its pre market highs, which is two. 39 and so the minute it breaks 239 that's a real good show of strength so what I want to see is I want to see it break the VWAP hold the VWAP push up to 239 This stock here is popping up, uh, but it's super expensive. This is like a $66 stock. That means this stock can just tank like $10, $20 at any time, and then we're just going to get crushed, right? Because we're playing with very, very small portfolio size. We see here TTO will get rejected off the VWAP. So COVID-19 catalyst here, um, showing very good human trials. So I'm going to keep an eye on this. It might be fun to play with a couple of shares, uh, but it is very expensive. We see TTOO, it broke the, the 211 mark. So I don't like that. I'm going to get out. I'm just going to sell my 250 shares here. What? Uh, so something is wrong with my Quest Trade. It's not letting me sell my position. So sometimes Quest Trade glitches like that. Um, and so I was trying to sell my position there. Uh, but what it thought was that I'm trying to create a short position. I'm not trying to create a short position. I'm just trying to get rid of the shares that I already have, Quest Trade. Come on, Quest Trade. So sometimes it glitches like this. Um, so the key is not to panic and just kind of understand okay it's a program so i'm going to watch this here if it breaks this line at 209 i'm going to sell
Let's go, QL. QL back to 610. It had problem breaking that before. Now it's pushing up. Let's see if we can make some money here. So, for QL, we need to see it break this level here, right? When it touched 634, we saw a huge rejection, so found support along the VWAP again, and is now creeping back up. But this is like a triple top. This is like super strong ceiling, concrete level. So, this is a double-edged sword. What happens is, when we hit this, if we, most likely we're gonna get rejected we're gonna fall back down but if it breaks this level it's gonna be a very 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 strong break and it's gonna shoot right um, and so be careful here guys um, so I'm, I'm in with 500 shares at 610 but I'm gonna move my stop loss up to break even Um, some people are trying to sell already so when it hits 620 I'm gonna try and sell some shares here just take some money off the table so it's already falling right so once again I kind of mentioned here um, when it hits this level you got to be careful So on TT, it's just showing weakness here. Uh, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna sell. There we go. So I wanna see a break here at 635. It's slowly pushing up. There we go, we just broke. That's gonna be a big break. Let's go. Okay, so I just sold my TTOO so I can focus on this stock here. Um, if it falls down to 620, I'm going to just hit my sell. Just because right now my cost base is a 610. Six forty on the ask. There we go. We're popping up, guys. So I want to see this break six dollars and fifty cents. Right, guys. So traders, we have kind of a a mental support and resistance. Six at the fifty cent mark, at the twenty five cent mark, at the four dollar mark. We just broke six fifty. Very nice. I'm gonna sell two hundred fifty shares here. Um, just take some money off the table and I'm going to ride the, my other 250 shares. So uh, my cost basis was 610 and I sold at 645 which is 30 cents a share on 250 shares, right? So that's pretty good. That's about $100 there. So I'm just going to wait. I want to see the show strength. So what I want to see is I want to see it hold this this floor now, which was its previous ceiling, right, at 625. So it has to hold 625 for me. If it breaks 625, I'm selling. Because remember, guys, previous resistance needs to be new support. If it is not new support, that is a huge sign of weakness. And get out. Boom. Don't even think. Just click sell. So what I'm looking for here is it needs to hold 625. If 
back up in the 50s. Well, there we go. It just hit 58, hit 60. So remember what I said, guys. This previous ceiling is a very, very strong ceiling. So if it breaks, it's going to run. And that's what we saw here. It broke, and now it's running, right? So I'm going to move my stop loss up to 645. So I want to see it hold 650. So it needs to hold 650. 650 is our mental line in the sand. So if traders let it fall below 650, that means um, they don't believe in the stock anymore. So it just broke the half dollar a little bit. So it falls below 645. I'm going to sell another 150 shares. I only have 250 shares left. I'm going to sell here. So I only have 100 shares now. Um, so on this trade here, I've made $61. Um, and I have 100 shares left. I'm going to ride this up. <clears throat> So what I'm trying to demonstrate here, guys, is that you guys can play with a very, very small portfolio size and make good money, right? Um, so here this morning, you see me playing with very small share size to demonstrate that. And so I would buy 100, 200 shares at a time of a $6 stock, right? So if I'm buying 100 shares of a $6 stock, that's $600, right? If I'm buying 200 shares, that's um, $1,200. But I've made $61 using like about a thousand dollars right and that's pretty much um what is that that's like a six percent gain on your money most of the time when people are invested in like mutual funds etfs and things like that you're lucky to get six percent in an entire year but just here you saw in a matter of few minutes we made six percent on your money and so that's what you want to do each and every day five six seven ten percent um and then if you do that, your money will compound very, very fast, uh, which is which is something awesome, right? This is a pullback here. Um, I'm in at 610. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if it falls to this level, which is 630. If it falls to 630, I'm gonna try and buy 100 shares, just 100. And I'm gonna try and write it back up. So it falls to 6.30, I might buy some and try and ride it back up to 6, 6.50, 6.60. Right, so I'm looking for a 30 cents a share on 100 shares, which means I'm going to make $30 on this trade. Also, you want to be careful because right now the time is 9.26. The market opens at 9.30 um, and so you don't know um, what's going to happen here. I'm going to buy 100 shares at 6.35 and if it falls down to my break even I'm going to I'm going to sell. So my average cost base is now 6.22 because I added 100 shares at 6.35 so I saw this flush I saw this uh, candle uh, rejecting off the lows so I want to see it pop back up, right? So you want to learn how to read candles, and that way you can predict where the where the the stock is going to go, right? So I bought a 635. It's back up to 645, um, and I have my stop loss. Uh, let's let it leave it at 630. I'm taking a more conservative approach because the morning is about to start. 930 is when the market officially opens, and people are going to start flooding the market, right? And when that happens. You don't know if this is going to pop down or if this is going to pop up, right? We want to see it pop up because we're in, um, but it can always pop back down, right?
Oh, there we go. Back up to 650. So it keeps tapping 650 and falling back, right? I want to see a break 650. I'm watching the tape here. I want to see green. Bloop, green. Right now, it's the bid is 640 by 645, um, which is good. I want to see it hold 640, but what I really want to see is I want to see it break 650, which is the resistance, pop back up to its previous highs, which is 660, 661, 662, and then break that, move to 7, 750, and then 861, which is my target up here. Goes back down to 635. That's where I just bought my second order. 630, 635. Slowly creeping back up to the 640s. We see some buyers popping up at 638 back up to 640 that's what I like to see I don't see a lot of sellers which is really good uh, that means we can run up and there's no ceiling there of sellers oh there we go this is 930 it's just popping up I'm going to sell some shares here. Sold it 100 shares. So I hit a high of 675. I'm just going to ride these 100 shares up 680. Right? So as I mentioned before, guys, we saw this gap here be all the way up to 860, and I want to hit I want to hit $8. I want to see a break $7 and run. Let's go. And also I have my sell, right? If it tanks which it can at any time, I'm going to sell. If it breaks $7, I'm going to buy. I'm going to buy 50 more shares here. Buy 50 shares. Because um, it broke $7. So my cost base is now a $6.50. I'm going to wait for a second. I want to see a hold the $7 mark. Show some strength here for me. There we go. 720. 715. So this stock might halt at 752. So I want to hold this into the halt level if it does. Um, if it breaks 720, I'm going to sell 50 shares. Uh, but I think it is going to push up. I'm going to sell 50 shares here. I'm going to sell another 50 shares. So I'm only in with 50 shares. Um, I've made $137 on the day. It's only it's only 9.30 right now. I want to see it hold $7. It's, I'm going to sell the rest here at $7. So right now I am up $163. Um, let me let me show you what I saw here right once again trailing wick right huge rejection off of 740 I wanted to hold this into the halt 
which would, which would have been around 750, 760, um, but it did not, right? It flushed back down. I sold at 716, 718, 701. Um, and so now I'm going to wait. I want this to show me strength. It might bounce down here and pop back up to its previous highs. Awesome. Or it might just flush all the way down. We don't know, right? Um, so what we need to do is we need to take a more conservative approach right now. We don't want to give back the money that we made. We made $163 in half an hour just pushing a few buttons on our mouse, right? Um, take a look here. I want to see it break 715. If it breaks 7.15, I'm going to hop in with only 50 shares. Looks like it's going to break, so I'm going to hop in here at 7.10. I want to see it break 7.15. So right now it's holding the $7 mark. Ah, it's flushing. So I just got out. Right now, I'm only playing with 50 shares because I made some good money on the day. Um, I don't want to give it back. So it's having trouble here. I think this stock is finished for now. And now we're just going to sit. We're going to wait. Be super conservative. Um, TTOO. Look at this. Popping up too. Defend the VWAP. Popping up. So I might switch over to TTOO. Let's take a look at our other stocks. YR. Just fading. So in QL, uh, we find we find some support here around 680. Looks like it's ripping. If it breaks the highs of 740, I'm gonna hop in. So this falls down to 680. I'm gonna buy um, with a stop just below 680. Or if this breaks this line here, which is at 720, I'm going to hop in as well. Got rejected at 715. It's going. So I'm adding here. So I got in at 720. I want to see it rip up uh, to 740. And when it does, I'm going to sell. So it's back up to 7.30. I want to see what it does at 7.40. 7.42 was a big, big, big resistance, right? And it just flushed back down, this huge rejection here. So I'm in at 7.20, only 50 shares. I'm not giving back my money. That's my money. I'm keeping it. If it doesn't break, I'm going to get out. There we go. Bro, boom, 7.50. Let's go. Um, okay, so 750 small rejection, and now I'm just gonna ride this up. I'm just holding this position because I don't know if it's gonna flush down. It needs to break 750. 750 is daily highs. I just hit that and just got rejected, like running into a brick wall. So just watch here, guys. If this dips down anywhere to like 720, um, that is a good buy-in position because that was its last ceiling, which is now its new floor. So previous resistance becomes new support. I uh, got a sell here, it fell. So huge flush, right? So that's something you guys want to look out for is anytime it runs into a huge wall. So I just added here at 707. I want to see this pop back up. So that was a bottom bounce. Um, so my the low is 91 if it breaks 91 I'm out I'm out so this is a pretty big sell-off if it hits 670 I'm gonna try and get in I'm gonna take a starter here at 680 680 is a nice nice point in the stand there we go back up to 7 I want to see 715 if it can't break 7 I'm gonna get out 93, 92, 95, 97, 7 for a second. I'm selling here. So 18 cents uh, profit there. Um, so I'm going to wait. So that's what I'm going to look for. That was a quick bottom bounce.
Um, it hit 680, which was the line that we're looking for. I bought at 680 and I sold at 698. So that's 18 cents of profit. Uh, so if you're in with 100 shares, that's 18 bucks uh, USD, right? So that's $25 Canadian. That took us a whole of five seconds to do, but we had to have drawn this line in the sand to know that it was going to bounce here. It bounced. It hit resistance at $7, which we talked about before, right? Whole numbers are resistances. Boom, it hit that, ran into a brick wall, fell back down. So at this point in time, I want to see it bounce off the VWAP down here, which is 660. And if it does, I'm going to hop back in. Only 50 shares. I don't want to give back my money. That's my money. TTOO is just, is just fading. I'm going to take it off. Take a look at other stocks. This here is moving. CPST, let's take a look at this. So, there was a rejection in here. Um, so, I'm going to wait. If it breaks 3, I'm only buying 50 shares. What am I doing? If it breaks 350, um, I'm going to hop in. Looks like it might break, so I'm hopping in here. So I got in at 3.45. I mean, it just broke 3.50. I'm going to try and rise this up. I'm only in with 50 shares. I have my hand on the sell just in case it flushes back down, which is what it can always do at any time. Um, but I want to see this pop up, and I want to see this halt, right? Because this is super extended. If it halts, it's going to show that it's super bullish, and it might pop up even more. Um, so I got in at 3.45. It's now 3.55. Only 50 shares in, super conservative. Looks like it's getting rejected here. I'm going to hold it for a second. I'm going to sell. So I sold it, 5 cents profit. Who cares? I didn't take a loss. Made $3 on it. Took me 2 clicks of a mouse and 5 seconds. I'm going to wait for it here. Looks like it's going to flush down. Huge tail of rejection, right? Boom! That rejected here. It's bouncing off this level. I want to see it hold 350. If it does, I'm going to buy in again. Looks like it's holding. I'm buying in at 65. Uh, we see this flush back down to the 50s. But it did hold this level, which is what I like to see. I'm going to draw a line here for us, guys. So I'm going to hold this for now. I want. Oh, that flush. That flush, though. So I'm going to sell. That was a huge flush. That's what you want to look out for. Um. So it just bounced off here. So now I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait on this. It might flush all the way down. It might hold. So I want to see it hold this view up, which is 340. And it has a high of day of 366. Uh, my worry is we're going to hit our head in the sand here at 350, right? Remember, this is this is a, a resistance. So I don't want to buy a 340 and get rejected off 350. That's too much risk, right? QLGN is is broke the view up. Um, so a sign of weakness. On QLGN, what I'd be looking for here is a bounce off of this line. Um, actually, 625 might be a good buying position. So if it hits 625, I'm going to take 50 shares. I want to see it bounce here for a second. Because um, the halt level going down is 618. So you don't want to hold the stock going down. Uh, so that's why I hesitated there, right? So we saw it touch this line. I drew it in right before it touched, 625. But if it falls below that, it might halt, and you might not be able to get out in time. That's not something you want to do. Um, so that is not a risk worth taking because it can hit 618, halt, and then just open down here, which is crazy. So that's why I did not take that trade. But as you can see, that was a nice bottom bounce, right? You buy in here at 625, and then you sell it up here at 6. 45 which is a nice 20 cent bounce on 100 shares that's 20 bucks in your pocket click buy click sell 
Um, I hesitated on that uh, just because I was a little bit scared, to be honest, uh, because the halt level is just right here. But as you can see, if you understand where to draw these lines in, it's very easy to predict where these bounces are going to happen, right? And you guys saw that live. Um, I identified this here. I drew it in, and it bounced right off this line. I drew it in maybe about a minute, two minutes before it bounced, and there we go, right? And so we see it flush right through here. Bounce off this line that was already sitting here. Um, awesome. I love it. New stock that's popping up here, Fio Pharmaceutical. Uh, we traded this before, which is why I have a line, but it's a lot lower than where I traded it. <clears throat> Finding support here along the VWAP, so I'm just going to watch this for a second. Fio, P-H-I-O. I'm not buying in. I'm just going to sit. I'm going to wait, and I want it to show me some strength, right? See this ceiling here? New floor. So it found support off this floor. Um, if it on file, if it bounces off this floor again, I'm going to take a small position and I'm going to have a stop loss right below this floor. MIOS is just popping up, so we were keeping an eye on this. So I want to see MIOS actually break um, that line there. And if it does, I'm going to hop in with 50 shares. So that line there is 282. So if it breaks 282, I am in. If it falls down to $2, I am in. So let's wait here. 260, 258. Right, guys? And I want to point out here, I'm playing with 50 shares and it's a $2 stock, which means 2 times 50 is you're putting in $100 to make money, right? So you can play with very, very small portfolio sizes and make good money. Um, I'm going to be quiet here. It's running. I want to see a break. Let's go. So it's curling up here. Uh, let's see it break. I want to see it break 280, 284 actually. And this was a break of VWAP setup. We talked about this in the course. When it breaks this yellow line, it shows real good strength, right? So it broke this yellow line. It broke this previous uh, line here. Uh, but once again, we're getting kind of rejected here. So let's wait and see. But that would have been a very, very good buy-in, right? So the minute it broke the VWAP here at 230, and right now it's sitting at 260. That's a nice 30 cents per share. On 100 shares, that's 30 bucks. That's that rejection there. So if it falls back down to 230. Um, or two or two, I might take a starter. It depends on, on what I feel like. Probably two dollars, I'll take a starter just because it's finding some good support at the two dollar mark. So this is the hardest part of trading right here, guys. Sitting and waiting, waiting for the good setups for us to buy in. There we go. It's starting to run up now. Let's see what happens. It can't break 270. Keeps on bouncing off 270. So we're not going to do anything. We're just going to wait. There we go. It's running. I'm going to buy in here. I bought in at 275 with anticipation of the break 
of 285. That was a good show of strength. We see green, 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 green bars volume coming in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I bought in at 275 because I thought it was going to run up and break. It didn't. Um, but I'm still safe. I'm not worried. I'm going to wait. Um, if it hits the view up down here at 235, I'm going to buy in another 50 shares. Like I said, guys, the hardest thing is to sit on your hands and wait for a good setup. I bought in prematurely there, as you guys saw, uh, but we finally broke. That's what I was looking for. That break there, um, it went to a high of 287. Um, and I'm in at 275. I'm going to wait here. 285, 285, 284, 282, 280. I want to see it hold 280, right? So here is this pre-market high that had huge resistance here before. If it breaks this and holds above this, that's going to be a super strong show of strength and it's just going to blast off. And I want to see it blast off. So I'm going to hold. I want to see it hold 280. Come on. Oh, I'm selling off. So it's selling off. So I sold there. I lost one cent. So I bought in. At 275, I sold at 274. Um, so I'm just gonna wait because it did not break this, it got rejected, and so I was wrong. When you are wrong, you cut your losses right away. Um, and as you can see, I lost 50 cents on that trade, which is okay, right? So I risked 50 cents to make like 20 bucks, 30 bucks, which is an acceptable loss. So that's pretty much like a 60 to 1 risk to reward ratio right I was wrong I thought it was gonna break and run it didn't it took too long to break so I got out right it's better to be wrong and not lose money than to be right like two three four days later and lose money right and that's the key to being a good trader oh this stock here just popped all the way up but it's way too expensive. It's like a $73 stock. I don't know if I want to play this at all. But Miles, whoo, Miles are running. So I might hop in here. So if it breaks 288, I'm going to hop in um, because I want to see this run up. BNX is just too expensive for me, which means I got to manage my risk. Even though it's running up, I feel a lot of FOMO. I need to understand that right now the stock is $75 and it can come down at any time. So I just bought in here. At 2.92 on Myos, just because it started to run up, um, and I want to see a break three dollars. So I have my hand on the sell just in case it flushes and falls back down. If it goes above three dollars, that's a real show of strength. It's at 98, 99, three dollars, 301, 39, 309. Awesome. I want to see this push up. A lot of volume is coming in now. We see a lot of green coming in here at the bottom. So I'm going to hold for a second just because I got in at 292. It's kind of flirting with that $3 mark. The high of that candle was 309. It is back down to 280s. So if, if it falls down to 280, I'm going to take a starter. I'm not, I'm like add to my position. <clears throat> so I'm just watching here, watching my level twos. It's holding three dollars now, which is excellent. Oh, just broke three. So it's popping up, falling down, popping up, falling down. So I just sold. Uh, I bought in at 2.92. I bought. I sold at 95 cents, made a dollar. 
I'd rather make a dollar than lose twenty dollars, right? So I bought in because I thought it was gonna run. It did not run. I wanted to see it hit three sixty, it didn't hit. So I'm out. I'll take my dollar. So on BNTX, I'll buy 10 shares. Oh, MYOS popping up without us. So I'm going to wait for this to fall down to $3 and I'm going to buy again for MYOX. The high of that last candle was 25 so it breaks 25 um, that's a good show of strength, but this always pops up, falls back, pops up, falls back. So right now, what I'm waiting for is the fallback, right? And usually it falls back to 3-ish. Um, I'm going to take a starter here at 316. So only 50 shares. And I want to see it hold the $3 mark. So if it breaks $3, I'm going to be out. So what I'm doing here is I'm risking uh, 16 cents to see this go up to 65, right? Which is another uh, 30, 40 cents. So that's a 3 to 1, 4 to 1 risk reward ratio. So I'm in at 316. So I want to see this push up. If this breaks 350, I might add some shares just because it's showing some good strength there. So it has a high of 340 for the day. It's getting stuck around 330, right? And so that's what this stock just does. It pushes up 10, 15 cents, will fall back 10 cents, push up 10, 15 cents, fall back 10 cents. I'm back down to break even. Um, so if it falls to three dollars, I'm gonna add. If it falls below three dollars, I'm gonna sell. Because if it falls below three dollars, it's showing weakness. Um, and I was wrong in my prediction on my hypothesis, and so I'm getting out. It's back up to 25, 30. Let's see what it does here. A lot of churning, a lot of selling, a lot of buying. We don't really know where it wants to go. Traders don't know where it wants to go. They're unsure right now. It could flush at any time. So hand on the sell, hand on the buy. If it falls to three, buying. If it falls below three, selling. I'm just waiting now. Ooh, nice. 10,000 share buyer at 320. It's good level of support. Back down 20 shares. Oh, I'm gonna try to buy a dip here. So I, so I bought some at 308. So I'm in with 100 shares now, cost basis of 312. I'm gonna sell some positions when it pops up. I'm gonna sell there at break even just to lower uh, my risk there. If it falls below $3, I'm gonna exit. Looks like it's going to fall below, so I just exited that. Um, so now I'm going to be looking to buy around, actually I don't know if I want to buy, right? Because we see a big rejection here, right off the, the 40 cent mark. Let's look at the 5 minute setup. On the 5 minute, it needs to break 332 to show any real strength. QL finding support here which is a line we drew in earlier this morning so that was good so this would have been a nice bottom bounce if we bought here at 75 caught it all the way up to 605 um, so that was a nice 30 cents bounce we would have caught that a bunch of times here if we we're watching QL um, that's the hard thing about trading you don't really know 
what to watch and when you're looking away and you see some strength you might miss opportunities somewhere else um, but that is no reason to get reckless with your trading right because what you guys need to understand is that there's always a next trade coming up so there's no reason to hop in and make a rash decision if you miss the trade you miss the trade right don't feel any FOMO just kind of relax um, because the next one is coming POSS um, I'm not exactly sure what's going on here let's take a look at it no real news no real volume So let's see what it does here. It's tapping this line a couple of times here. I want to see it hold this line. Um, normally we would take a bottom bounce here, but it's been showing some weakness, right? It push up, fall down, push up, fall down. And there's a big rejection here. Anytime we see this big rejection, we might see a flush. Traders try to buy this bounce here, um, but they couldn't recover uh, its previous support levels or highs. So it's a, a little bit of a sign of weakness. And also we're flirting with the $3 level, right? So if we're buying down here, um, at like 290 and we hit three dollars we might get rejected and bounce back down right so let's take a look at QLGN it's starting to, to move back up a little bit if it breaks this line here um, I'm gonna be interested this line here is 625 it just got rejected off of that. So I'm going to take a starter here at 224 for the break of this line here. And so I want to see it hold this previous level of support here at 607. So what I'm looking for here is I want to see this break 625 and I want to see it break this view up here at 646. It needs to hold this for me or I'm going to get out. So let's see if we can hold six. Ah, it broke. So I got out. I'm going to try and catch a, a bottom bounce off of here. So what I'm looking for is 580. Some news here. Okay. A little bit of news there, some financing news. Um, <clears throat> watching MY, if it hits five, I mean not MY, Q, QL. 
Um, I want to catch it around 585. I'm just going to wait. If it falls to 585, awesome. Um, and if it doesn't, then we'll see. We're just looking at for other opportunities right now. No real news on this. Just gonna pop it in. MITC. So QL is just kind of bouncing around here. MYTC, I just have it up on my orders in case it runs up. I want to just try and catch it into a halt. Um, it might not. Uh, let's see here. So we don't know. There's really no news on it. So today, nothing is really running too much. I mean, we caught our, our biggest run on QL. Um, that was earlier on in the morning. Try to make some plays on some other things. It didn't really quite work out. So now we're just going to wait. Ah. Uh, so just kind of hovering around this this mark here. Uh, not something I like to see. I want to see it have a strong, decisive bounce. So for QL, uh, I would be looking for it to break this line here, which is 630. And why? Coming back to the VWAP. G H L. Um, so this is kind of moving. I'm gonna try and hop in here. It just halted. I think I got in a little bit late. I put in the order there. I'll see if it gets filled. In the meantime, let's see what we're looking at. That's kind of what we're looking at here on LGHL. LGHL, I'm going to pop into here for you guys so you can see it better. LGHL. I'm going to do 50 shares here. So this is halted. That's cool. I wanted to show you guys a halt today. So I'm going to play this. Um, so it halted here at $2.93 at 10.05. Um, so anytime we have a halt, it usually unhalts in about 5 minutes. So it halted at 10.05 and 26 seconds. So it's going to unhalt at 10.10 with 26 seconds. MYOS pushing up here. So let's just pop this back in. So if it breaks, it's high of day. I'm, I'm going to be interested. I'm going to try and hop in because it's showing a good amount of strength. High of day here got rejected off of 340. Okay. So until it hits 340, I'm not really interested. It needs to show me that it has strength. It needs to show me that I can trust it. And that it's going to continue to run up to 365. I got my hand in my buy button here. 50 shares. Let's see if it breaks 340. There it 
38, 40. Big sellers at 40. Just broke. So I'm in at 44. So now that is showing strength. I mean, I'm going to hold it for a bit. I'm in at 344. And then we have, a, I'm going to be careful here because we're right at 350. Forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight. All back down to forty. <clears throat> um, so we're getting rejected here. If it falls below um, three fifteen, I'm going to take my loss and exit. So the high in MYOS is 349. It's consolidating around this point here. I want to see a whole 330, 329, back up to 340s it just needs to break 350 it kind of hit its head on 349 So LGHL is about to resume. I want to play this for you guys just because halts are kind of cool. Um, I'm going to take my loss here at MYOS uh, just so that I can focus on LGHL. So I'm going to big screen this for us. So I have a buy on LGHL, a market buy so I can hop in. I think it's going to open higher. It is a recent IPO, so it might just spike up. Um, and then if it falls to $1.75, I'm going to try and pick up another 50 shares. Um, so either way, I'm going to be in. So let's see what happens. It's going to unhalt in about a couple seconds here. Still halted. It might be a 10 minute long halt. So halts are usually in five minute intervals. It's not in halting. We gotta wait for another five minutes, guys. That means I sold my position on MY for no reason. Um, okay, so back to watching MY. I'm gonna add in here at 46. So it touched 350 and it fell back down. So it looks like it wants a break. Um, it, uh, it's having a lot of trouble breaking. I'm still holding. I'm going to try and buy some around here at 320. If it falls to 320, I'm going to buy. If it pumps above 350, I'm going to sell just because that's what it does. It pumps and falls, pumps and falls. So when it pumps, you want to sell. When it falls, you want to buy. When it falls to 320, I'm going to take a position just because it found a nice support down here at 319. But MY has been teasing us the whole morning. So this is a big ceiling here, right? 350 is the mark to break. 
um, and it's been having super lot of trouble here. I'm going to take a starter here, add to my position at 326. Just be, oh, that flush down. That's what I did not want. Let's see if we can fight to hold that. So let's see if we can get a nice bounce back up. I was trying to catch that bounce at 320. So I got in a little bit premature at 326. I got to stop out here. Doesn't look like it's bouncing here, so I'm stopping out of MYOS. So I'm done with MYOS for the day. Uh, it's been kind of faking us out the entire day. MYOS, why you do this to us? So MYOS, my total losses on that is $40. Um, pretty cheesed. So it's just kind of hitting this, falling back down, hitting this, falling back down. Should have known better. I thought it was going to break and run. It didn't break and run, uh, but that happens. So I want to take a look at this halt here on GLHL. So right now we're just kind of playing with free money. I'm $75 up for the day. Don't really want to give it all back. Um, so so this is going to unhalt in about a minute. On this here guys we have pre-market highs of 330 we have we have day lows of 232 so if it falls down it might pop up here and flash back down when everyone's selling uh, so I might try and pick it up at three I mean at, at what is this 232 I want to try and put a market order only 25 shares I don't know where it's going to go. If it pushes up, awesome. If it doesn't, I'm only going to take a loss on 25 shares. So we have a couple seconds, about 20 seconds. So if it pops above 318, 330, I'm going to add. If it falls to 230, I'm going to buy. So I have a market order. like this is a 15 minute long halt boring so we're gonna have to wait another five minutes for this to unhalt before we get to play it MYOS slowly creeping up I don't want to look at this MYOS is just a big tease MYOS is not my friend today <clears throat> So another stock here that is moving. Uh, we've traded this before, made some money. Let me see if there's any news on this. No news. Okay, well, it's day highs. I'm just gonna pop this in here. It is 190, 189. So the breaks that I might take a position
There's a 50,000 share seller at 190. There's 13 million shares bought and sold so far on at. So let's see if we can take out this seller here. Looks like it wants to creep up. Pre market highs of 220. Good thing we didn't play this. Touch this level and just flush back down to three dollars. QL is finding a bottom here. So random bottom. It's really nothing here. Fifty thousand shares on the ask at 190 let's see if we can break that if we can break that I'm gonna add if we can't I'm just gonna sit here So I'm going to give AF a little bit of time to break 190 just because it's been showing strength, it's been creeping up, creeping up, creeping up and then it's just smacking into 190, 50,000 shares. Okay, so look, eyes on LGHL as well, it's going to unhalt soon. So I have a market order, 25 shares only. I'm just going to sell AF so I can focus on on LG. <clears throat> so I'm in LG at 340. If it, I'm going to add here at 375. Hand on the sell in case it falls halts. Looks like it is halting up here again. There we go. Alright, so um, I'm going to explain that play to you guys because it was super fast. Uh, pretty much unhalted and went into the next halt right away. Uh, so on here guys, I had a market order to buy um, LG the minute it unhalted. So the minute it unhalted, I bought in at 341 and then like I said before, what I was looking for is I wanted to see it break this line here at 361 which was a previous resistance and so the minute it broke three it looked like it was going to break 361 I bought in again um, right because but it was shooting up so fast when I clicked buy market I got in at 375 and at 375 that's where it's halting up here right and so now it's halted again um, and so it looks like it's going to push up so we want to watch this just because it is, so this is a recent IPO, right? Um, that's why there's no chart back here. Um, and so we, there's a resistance level here. Uh, and then there's a re, kind of a small resistance level here where it halted. But as you can see, it has space all the way up to $5, right? So it might move, uh, it might unhalt move all the way up to $5 and after $5, there's nothing here which means it can just blast off to the moon and there's no ceiling anywhere 
Um, and that's something cool. That's something we want to watch out for. Um, I just want to show you guys this. So while we were playing LG, this broke through that ceiling of 190, right? So I probably should have just held that. Uh, but once again, you want to manage your risk. I didn't want to be playing one stock full screen and not be watching this stock over here because I could have just flushed down to the VWAP and I could have lost $20, $30. Um, so I kind of missed out on that push up here because we were in at uh, 189 and it is now 199 almost $2, right? So that would have been a nice a nice little game there. <clears throat> so an LGHL, um, I'm going to put a trailing stop limit of 25 cents, which means it can pop up as much as it wants, but the minute it falls down 25 cents from wherever it is, it's automatically going to sell for me. Um, I'm just playing this halt here for fun. Uh, small share size, just to kind of show you guys what, what amount of money you guys can make playing with very small shares, right? Because most of us, uh, we don't have a lot of money to play with. Um, and we want to start building that up, change our life, make 50, 100 bucks a day, then 100 to 200 a day, then 200 to 300 a day, and then eventually 500, maybe 1,000, 2,000 a day. Who knows, right? But we need to work ourselves up from wherever we are today. And so it really doesn't matter what kind of, um, what what amount of money you have um, day trading if done properly you can make really really good returns on it versus any other kind of investment right so I have a trailing stop 25 cents and I'm also gonna ride 25 shares I only have 50 shares I'm just playing this for fun um, just to kind of see what's going on uh, so halts are really good I'm really glad that you guys got to see a halt today So this stopped here, it halted here at 375. I want to see it open kind of around the, above the $4 mark, right? Because once again, $4 will be a, uh, a resistance. So my cost basis on LG is 358. I want to see it open anything above 358. Um, if it opens kind of around 350, I'm going to sell, market sell, because I don't want to lose money. There we go. So it's opening. I'm going to hold here a little bit. I want to see it pop above $4. It's breaking here. So there's a big seller at 47. It might halt going down actually. So, So this stock popped up all the way to 390, and then flushed back down, right? That's why you guys want to be careful, and that's why I set a trailing stop. So what my trailing stop did is it popped up to 389 and then fell, and the minute it fell 25 cents, it sold, right? Um, so where's my trailing? My trailing is right here, and so it sold at 358, uh, which is kind of like my, my break even, and then I sold the rest when it flushed down, at 347 so I had 25 shares that I lost 10 cents on um, so for that play I lost two dollars which is okay because I was making this play seeing this line and then this blast off so what I'm gonna be waiting for here is a buy-in down here 
this freaking thing is moving without me. Um, so I missed the trade. I'm not gonna hop in it. Miles trying to trying to tease me again, trying to hit his day highs. I'm not even not even gonna not even gonna be interested. I might be interested. Let's see. But look at this act. Bought it down here and it's just popping up and it's going without us because we're playing this over here. But it's okay. It's it's run up too much right now. And so we'd be looking for a one minute pullback or a five minute pullback. And I don't even see any any news on this right now. <sighs> so Miles Miles, I want to see it break the day's highs of 351. So remember guys, we got rejected here three times, once, twice, and now we're just kind of consolidating over here. We might just get rejected back down. If we get rejected back down, I'm going to be happy I didn't play it. If this pops up, I'm going to be so mad that it's been teasing us the whole morning and then it finally broke this. App is moving up, moving without us. Double bottom here. Very cool on QL. Alright, so just popping off this line that we drew. Bounce here, bounce here again. What is Ass doing? Oh, good thing we didn't play. So, remember what I said, guys. The more times it hits the ceiling, the harder that ceiling is, right? This is like concrete steel and forest ceiling. It's just smacking its head into the ceiling. Can't break. Falling back down. And that's why I didn't play it. Thank goodness. So let's see what Ath does here. Let's see if it can break 220. So it's 10.30. Usually around this time, I kind of stop trading and I start working on, on uh, other things there. Ah, hitting this line, falling back down. Where is this? GL, 26 minutes and 13 cents. It's 10.30. Um, so, about one minute. One minute to unhalt. So, let's see where GL is going. So, on GL so far, we are, we're pretty much break even. The last $2 on it so far. But, let's see it pop. I want to see this pop. It feels like it is going to pop just because it had a recent IPO. Um, the sky is the limit for this stock right now. Well, if it can pass $5, the sky is the limit. Um, and so that's a risk I'm willing to take. So I think what's going to happen is it's going to fall um, and then it's going to pop up. So I want to put in a market order to buy 25 shares and I want to ride it up. So market order is set. So I bought at 365. Let's see it break four dollars. Come on, break four dollars. Break four dollars for me. There was a rejection there. Long candle wick. I'm gonna add here at another 25 cents at 78. I want to see it break four dollars. Break. Yeah, baby. Break that. I'm gonna sell here. So I'm in at 371. That's my cost basis. I'm selling here. Now it looks like we've got a rejection. It might fall back down. Oh wow, it just popped up. Let me see if we can break four. Nope, popping back down. So this is it's been rejected a couple times here. I need to see it break four dollars. If it can't break four dollars, I'm not going to play. 
high of day is 402. So it needs to break 402, 403, 405. Um, if it does, it's going to show some strength. 96, 90. So if it breaks 4, I'm just going to hit boom, bye. Big seller there, 380. Getting stuck around 390. Not interested until it breaks four. Just be patient here, guys. Oh, there we go. Broke four. I'm in. I'm in at 401. Um, and I want to see it just shoot up now. It might just get rejected here again, but it's like a flat top. It's pushing up. It's pushing up. Um, if it falls down uh, to 355, I'm going to add 405. 405 new highs. 409. 410. I'm in at 401. People are starting to get interested. We got 2 million shares bought and sold so far. This is going to be my last trade of the day. Uh, let's see where this goes. Hopefully it's a nice green trade. I want to try and buy a dip down here at uh, 360. I'm only playing 25 shares. So let's see what we can do. hanging out around the 80 cent mark so I want to see it hold this line here 360 if it falls anywhere to 365 I'm gonna buy if it falls below 3 355 I'm gonna sell uh, for now I'm gonna hold just because it's churning and fighting back and forth at this point So between so already 2.2 million. Last time I shouted this out, it was 2 million. Ninety-two, ninety-seven, so this 95, this thing is just getting stuck here, uh, but it's getting stuck higher and higher and higher, which is a nice show of strength. So this here is kind of like a flat top here at 395, $4. So it can break the $4 mark. Um, it's, it's fairly strong. I might buy this if it touches 60. Forty-three. I'm taking a small starter there, so I'm in at three seventy-two now, just because I bought at three forty-four. I want to see this bounce. Sixty-eight. I'm gonna sell some shares here at sixty-two. Let's see what it does here, guys. MYOS hit a new high of day. I have it up on my charts here on, on Quest, so I can see it moving. But it's it's just been teasing us the whole day, so I'm not even going to try and play that. So I bought the dip there. I bought at 3.44. I sold at 3.62. Uh, so what is that? 18 cents profit. So if it breaks that mark of 44, I'm going to be out. Otherwise, I want to see this ride back up to the $4 mark. Right? Because it keeps on getting stuck here. 
Um, so if it gets up to 390, I'm going to sell. If it falls below 344, I'm going to sell, right? Because I'm right now I'm holding 25 shares. It's holding this level. Um, now 2.6 million shares. But I, I want to direct you guys here. Volume is dropping off, right? This is the volume bars down here. Less and less volume is coming in. Um, I'm going to minimize this for now. NYOS pushed to new highs, fell back down. I power at its day highs. I'm just going to pop it in here um, just to give it a watch. So LG is pushing up just on this chart here. I want to sell when it gets to 390, 391, 394, 395. I'm selling here. See that it touched four dollars and it fell back down. Um, so I'm going to wait for it to push past 410 before I buy in. So on that play, I made 275. Woo! Um, and so it needs to break 410 for me to be interested. See that, that flash back down. That's what happens every time you hit this brick wall. So that's why you sell up here, you buy down here, and just repeat. Um, and then you sell when it breaks VWAP. So when this falls back down to 360, I'm going to buy 25 shares. If this pops above 410, I'm going to hop in again and try to ride it to the moon. <clears throat> so it's just consolidating. So this passes four dollars. I'm going to be interested. Four, four, ten. That area there. It's at three ninety right now. Three eighty, three ninety eight, four, four hundred two, four hundred six. So I added there. I mean, start took a starter at four hundred five. So I want to see a push over four ten now. So we finally broke four dollars. Uh, I bought in there. So this is slowly pushing higher and higher, just creeping. It's just creeping higher and higher. 3 million shares now. Now it's falling back down. Come on, GL. Oh, that flash. I bought at. 372 um, so I try to catch that dip there I was a little bit slow um, so I'm in at 388 50 shares I want to see a hold this level here if it breaks below 355 I'm gonna be out and I'm gonna call it a day enjoy the rest of the day with the family work on other projects looks like this is gonna be a losing trade let's see if we can hold 355 which is kind of like the VWAP area I have my hand on the cell IPWR is just pumping I got a cell here at 360 I'm still in with 25 shares I'm hopping in IPR, IPWR. Um, I'm in at for 50 shares at 8.16. So this this GL just flushed on me, so I, I exited. Um, IP, IPW, whatever that is. So it just halted 
Um, awesome. This is going to be my last play for the day. So this flush, I got out right before the flush, thank goodness. I saw it kind of consolidating around here. Um, so I got out, exited my position. Um, and now I'm in IPWR. This was a fast move, guys. So I'm going to pop in IPWR here. IPWR, I'm in with 50 shares at 816. Um, I saw a lot of volume coming in here. Volume spikes slowly moving up and then boom. So I'm going to take a look here on the daily, guys. Whoa. Okay, so we just tap this level here. So things are starting to get interesting now, actually. Um, it is 10.43. So ideal power. So this has room to move to $10. It may or may not. Um, I'm in for 50 shares at 8.16. It halted at 8.27 at 10.42. So it's going to unhalt at 10.47. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to refill my drink. My throat is getting kind of dry and I will be back before it unhalts. See you guys in a bit. Alright guys, so we are back. Um, it's going to unhalt in about a minute. QL pushing up. I want to see QL break this VWAP here. Otherwise, I'm not really interested. Uh, iPower looks like it's going to halt down, unfortunately. Right, ask bid seven dollars and something. Where is that power? Here it is. Uh, it's gonna unhalt. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a trailing stop limit as always of 25 cents on 25 shares. I'm gonna ride the other 25 shares into the sunset. So let's see what it does here. Hopefully it opens uh, near the ten dollar mark. That's what I want to see. And I want to see you ride it up just because this is the next level of resistance here. 
it was opening at 8.30, 8.40, uh, falling back down, flushing. So I'm going to see here if it breaks tonight, I'm going to hop in, hopping in here. Only 25 shares. I want to ride into the next halt. There we go. So I got freaked out a little bit because it opened um, at like 8.40 and it fell back down. It triggered my stop loss here. So I sold um, 25 shares at uh, 8.04 and then sold my other position at 8.42. So that was almost like a break even trade as you see here. I made 350 on that trade. Uh, only 25 shares uh, each. Which is pretty nice, right? Because it is a, uh, what is it? An $8 stock and I played with 50 shares. Um, so if it was 100 shares, that'd be 8 times 100. That's $800. I played with 50 shares and so that is $400, right? And essentially, I made about $4 on $400, which is 1%. Uh, so that's one percent on your money in about a minute actually it halted one percent on your money in about five minutes which is pretty good right because normally when people are, are invested in like a mutual fund or an etf they're looking at six percent in an entire year we just made one percent in five minutes so that's pretty cool carve is moving carve is something we made a lot of money on yesterday i like carve oh look at that just broke the view up this is a setup that i like to play um show some good strength here on a break of view up and so i'm going to wait here um carve if it breaks eight dollars i'm going to hop in Right now it's getting stuck at 790. Um, it's curling up. So on IPWR, it halted at 1047. So it's going to unhalt at 1053. Five minutes, right? An IPWR, I'm in for 25 shares. So normally, I trailing stop loss 50%, hold 50%. Oh, TUL tried to push up and faded. Carve getting stuck. Let's see if Carve can hold this level here in the VWAP. Nice bounce off of this support. So I power about to unhalt. It's gonna unhalt in about a minute. Let's keep our eye on it. So I have my hand on the sell button. Looks like it's going to unhalt lower 
which is unfortunate. Usually when the halt's going up, it's going to unhalt higher. Uh, but today, from what we've seen, everything that halts, it kind of opens at the same level, flashes down, um, and either halts going down or it kind of consolidates there. Oh, there's a draw on some levels here. So 820 is a, a buy point, 760 is a buy point, 850, 880. I want to see a break nine and shoot up. Let's see what happens here. I want to see it. I gotta get out. It's dipping too much. So I am out for the day. Uh, let's see here. So it almost broke this line. It looked like it's gonna break this line. So I got out there. So I stole it at 8:33. Um, I lost 60 cents on that trade on 25 shares. So I'm going to call it quits for the day. So if we do a daily recap, um, I pretty much kept my purchase power around the $1,000 mark, right? So if you guys have $1,000, this is kind of what you guys can expect day trading uh, for the morning. And so we made about $50 USD, played with about $1,000 USD. And so that is about a 5% gain for today obviously if you're playing with more than a thousand dollars you can expect more um, gains right today was kind of slow kind of choppy which was unfortunate we got some halts which is kind of exciting but normally what you want to see from halts is you want to see it open higher um, and you want to see it it kind of just push up and and just blast off to the moon that's not what we saw here but that's it for me today it's coming up to 11 o'clock have a happy Canada Day you guys uh, thank you for joining us um, I hope you learned a lot. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Um, yeah, and I hope you join us uh, for the course. So go to www.dumbmoney.ca slash trading to find out more about the course. Uh, the course is about uh, 3 hours and 30 minutes long. It teaches you everything you need to know about day trading. This strategy, uh, kind of the strategy I put together for people with small portfolio sizes to still make really good returns. And also, you can follow me live day trading every single day um, so you'll be learning as I trade where I'm buying where I'm selling why I'm doing what take notes um, yeah if you have, guys have any questions send me an email mitch at dumbmoney.ca or just post uh, just here on, on my live video um, and I will get to your questions there put your email um, there so I can get back to you and that's about it enjoy your day guys uh, the rest of the day we have off made a little bit of money and Let's go. It's Canada Day. Let's celebrate. Happy birthday, Canada. Take care, guys. Have a good one.